let's talk about red flags in the marriage and then you can uh, take us through that and then what happened after the red flags all right my name is Hannah Wanjiko Kigodo all Mrs. Maura I would have been married in fact this should be now that you fast years but there are things that happen in marriage that of late we are hearing of so many manda cases, injuries or bad things happening in the marriage. And those are the red flags to watch for in marriage. If you've been married for a long time and those things that your spouses used to appreciate in you have changed to be negative and have become very irritant at the strictest thing, he's irritant. Those are the things to watch for. Like now you dress in a dress you used to appreciate there before. And anytime you put on that dress, it's he become irritated. And instead of even telling you, I don't like that dress, he starts shouting. The other thing we should look for is when your spouse get interested with more other people more than you. He is there to create time with other people more than you. That is a red flag you should also run. The other thing is, when you've been sharing all things like passwords, pin codes in the family, and all of a sudden your spouse start changing and put changing the pin number and and the pin numbers. Those are things to watch for. Because the first thing I realized in my in my marriage is that my husband changed his pin number in the bank. He never used to let me share his pin number because every time he used to go, he used to leave me with a pin number. With the, with the ATM card, and I used to work to work with this, and I never used to withdraw any money without telling him. I would tell him even in absentia that I want to use this money, and he would approve of it. But it started after he went. Any, anything I did, I employed staff. Even in the school, he came and challenged my staff. I talked with somebody something, and we had agreed. Then he came change. He promised you something. Like one time he told me, Hannah, when I come, I'll bring you a phone. Then when he came, he said, no, I didn't promise you a phone. Those are the Lord drugs you want to look for in a spouse that have changed. Because, as I said, it's only God who cannot change. And as I said, you can know a man, you can know a good woman when she has money and the, woman has, and the man has no money. And you can go know a good husband when she ha he has money and the, husband, the wife has no money. That's when I came to realize. There before, he used to give me a budget to control the kitchen. But later on, he changed. When I, I want to go to the market, we go with him, and people thought, I'm loved. We go with him, we pay the money, then I pick the things. When I want to go to the supermarket, we go with him, he, he, I carry the trolley, he pay the money, then we go back home. Then when visitors come, when I prepare for their meals, he's there complaining that I'm using things. And that is when I realized things were not normal. Then he started threatening me and he telling me he's going to rule me the feast. And I realized it in 2012. I don't know what happened. I think it was a small issue. Oh, I remember. I went to church, I preached, and he was not in church. Then after preaching, he came back. He told me that I preached badly. After the church members were complaining that I preached bad and I was beaten. I was given a thorough beating. In fact, that time, I had to go to Nairobi Women's Hospital, and I, I had to go for counseling for seven months. After that counseling, I thank God. I said counseling is very important. We talked with people who counseled me. And he told me, they, they helped me to see the red flags. And we talked, we talked, because when you go for counseling, there, they want to know why gender based violence. And I explained to them my life. And they helped me to, to, to realize. Then after that, I met with a friend of mine called Elizabeth. She's less, she's gone to the rest with the Lord. He introduced me to World Vision. And that holiday, that it was July 2007, 2013. We had a workshop in New Kenya Hotel. I went there for three weeks. And we learned on going back to Genesis Madrid. That was very instrumental in my life. And I also learned a family in a godly way. And when I was trained as a facilitator, the next meeting, we were supposed to go to Melele. And he said, I can't go alone. He started building me strat. I had to talk with my boss. My boss then was Patricia Wanjiko. She was working with World Vision. 
and she was very kind to me. But because she knew me even in her youthhood, he gave me permission to go for facilitation with my own husband. And then when we go, went for facilitation at the Midere Hotel, my husband was very controversial. Then when we came back, he said, eh, you can't go for that training. That training is ungodly. And we are using the Bible. I wish I can, I can bring up the manual on gender, channel of hope for gender, for channel of hope gender. It's very instrumental. It's very good, even for servant. Then he said, hey, these are teaching from America. America, they don't trust in a, in a man. The first one is a woman, the children, the dog. The man is number five. And I asked him, you have been going to America. Even now you are going to America. How come you don't believe to America? When I'm doing the training here, and now when you are going, to, to, when you are going, when you are going for your own work, you don't want to know. Then the problem came in 2009. I was proposed to go to, for gender for training in South Africa. Mount Vision was paying everything, including they picked with a, me with a taxi from home, but he had refused me to go. But that, that had been enlightened, and I had done my rights. I had known whether we are husband and wife, you are, the husband cannot dictate you what you're going to learn. And since I was going to learn more, I said I must go. In fact, I went, he didn't even say bye to me when I was going. Good, thank goodness, I had a taxi, it came and picked me, I went to the whole three weeks, four weeks, I stayed in South Africa, he didn't even call me. And then I realized, this is a very serious man. Because in 1995, when he went to South Africa, I'm the one who paid for his, for his money, I'm the one who prayed for outkeep. And even the money he had fair to go and come back. But when he said it was time to come back, he didn't have money. I was the one who sent money for him to come back. My, now this is my opportunity to go to South Africa. I've been paid for everything. The hotel, the air ticket, even the taxi to pick me from the airport and back. But he is refusing to me to know. And then when I realized, we are not walking the same path. And I said, now, Hannah, it's your life. That work, that training went for a long time. And now when he was going to, to America, when he come with money, he's not telling me how money he has made. But when I go for my own training, which then I was just being given an allowance of just 2,000 per day, he want me to use my money, but he doesn't want me to know his money. That is when things changed. And he started saying, hey, I told you that training is not okay. You are controlling your money. You know you are not the head. And then one day I told him, if God never wanted me to think, he would not have given me a head. In fact, I said it in the Kikuyu, Oyo Tiyoshoro, this is not porridge in my, in my head. This is mine for me to think. And I know what is right for me and what is not right for me. Then one day, he came back in 2018. He said, eh, I'm, I don't even know how to take good bath. I'm not taking bath properly. He shifted the bedroom. We had built another house out, out there from our wine house. He shifted the children. Then himself, he shifted from our bedroom. He went to the other bedroom. Then, I think it's 18th March, 2019, I went to his bedroom and asked for him money for breakfast. I was given a Dara beating. And this is now where I decided over is over. Then I was trying to run away. Then when, because he, has taken, he had taken the sword and I was running away because we had, uh, we had a car, this Cayenne that I had bought. I took the car, the car key. When I wanted to go and open the key, to open the key though that I ran away, he came and put me down, he put his leg on my neck. Then when I knew enough is enough. He went, he, he went and went to the police station. He said that I had beaten him with a padrock. But what I hit him with was the key of the car because I wanted to run away and he was refusing me to run away. Then when I came back, in fact, I took a photo because my face was swollen. I put it in Facebook because I was so much annoyed. And you know, with anger, you can do anything. Then when he ran away for two weeks, after two weeks, he came back. When he came back, I told him, me, enough is enough. I'm a wounded, I'm a wounded woman in this marriage. Now, what he was trying to do, he was even going to my friend and telling them how evil I am. They should not befriend me. They should not have company with me. So I went to FIDA. I was told that I needed the, marriage, the original marriage certificate. Him, he had the original marriage certificate. So I will not pursue the divorce. So me, I decided, and I told my best man, me, I've decided that I will never be beaten again. I told him, next time you beat me, even if it will mean I take a knife, I knife you, I better go to Langata and you go to the grave, but I will not allow you to beat me again. Then in 2019, February 19th, 
2018, that 2019, we were given a car. We are given two million to buy a car. We bought a car, CLFE KCF 920Z. It was a, a gift for the ministry. But he lost the car himself. I told him we write the rock book together. He refused. Then that was enough. They said, since now he wants to do his own things, I'm not going to follow him up. But me, I had decided. I told him, and I went to the OCS in Kabete. I t went to the police, Martin police station, and I told them, me, with my husband, we are no longer together. He has hidden the birth certificate because I want a divorce, and he doesn't want me to divorce. But in April 19, 2019, my mother was not feeling well. My father called me. And I took the key to CLV order because KN was not work in a working condition. I went with it to take my mother to Kijabi Hospital. By bad luck, I left my phone in the car when we were going to the hospital. Then he called me. When he called me, I could not pick the phone because the car, the keys were, were not in the, in, in, in the, in, in, with me, they were in the car. And I didn't realize. So when I got out of the hospital, I drove my mother home. Then when I was driving, I was at, at Rironi, I had a phone lang. I picked it up. It was the OCS of Kabete police station who was calling me. You know, my husband had reported to the police station that I had stolen the car. Then I went, I came, I brought the car, he took the car, he, had, he, packed all, he had already packed all his belongings, he left the house. Then he went and I told him, if you have left, don't disturb me. Me, I will never talk anything with you because if you can report to the police station that I've thrown at our car, and I even went and explained to, Mo, to, to the OCS, and I, in fact, even the OCS saw the foolishness in him. How can a man, a pastor, in fact, this name not even a pastor, a bishop, report that his wife has thrown his car. This was the first case. What of if the OCS took the friend's code and they fraud me with the car? It would have been very bad, but we thank God it went on. So since that day, 19th May 2019, I've never had my husband again in my house. I got a goiter, in fact, my, the, I got the goiter, even before he left the house. After 2019, I developed a goiter, but I didn't know it was a goiter. It was organized very late in 2017. So 2017, one day when he was talking me to the hospital, to, Ken to Kijabi, I was supposed to be done a test of 6,000. And that money, had, he had been given 30,000, I think 40,000 by, by somebody from America to take me to the hospital. But when we went to the hospital, the doctor was a Muzungu. And he said, hey, he must be done that test of 6,000. That is very expensive. In fact, he said in Kikuyu, I'll have come here to throw out my money. And that Muzungu man, is born in Africa, so he know all the Kikuyu. Then he called me back and told me, who is this? I told him he is my husband. That man told me, Hannah, I'm telling you, this goiter of yours is not a disease, it's pressure. It's pressure that it's eating you up, and that's why you have the goiter. And the only way to help yourself, even if you operate this goiter, is not going to help you. The only way to help you is get out of trouble, get out of harsh words. Get out of this man because his intention is to kill you. Then he went away in 2019. Then one day when we were talking, he came back. He came back with my neighbor Hannah. My neighbor Hannah is a good girlfriend of mine. In fact, she has walked with me this journey. Then one day he came and said, hey, Hannah, I've done investigation. Your father is not your father. You've been sleeping with your father. Then I was like, how can I sleep with my father? Because his aim, and that the day he said, Mimi, nita kupatia pressure mpaka ukufe. In fact, that time I stood, I said, Mimi, siwezi kufa nikiwa mtoto, nitaishi miaka ishirini. Because my, my grandma died at 106. And that is what he saw, that I was not lady we talk. Then he went, he carried his thing, he went and said, uh, uh, did, did the divorce. Then on 2020, 1st July, he brought me the divorce. Without my consent, without me signing. Now, after I got the divorce, I got so stressed. And in fact, after he left the house, because he made sure he left the house with me having nothing in my house. He even wanted me to go home. In fact, I went home for one month, but when my uncle told me, Hannah, you can't run away from your own house. Because that house, they knew how we had acquired it. I came back to the house. Then I stayed. Now the, that is where time stress caught up with me. I got so pressurized, I, I couldn't, I didn't have the appetite. I didn't have the power to eat. I didn't even want to talk to anybody. I didn't even want to see or talk to my children. I didn't even want to go to church. 
I didn't want anybody. In fact, I would lock my myself in the house. And even when people come and knock, when I see who is coming, I don't open the door. And that is when stress got me. I got migraine headache. For two years, I would take medicine every day, painkillers. But I thank God for good friends. There are those friends that would insist, even when they call. Even my daddy sometimes used to call, I would not pick the phone. My brothers would call me, I don't even pick the phone. My friend would even call me, I don't want to pick the phone because I was desiring to die. Every morning I would wake up and say, why didn't I die? Why have I woken up? But I thank God, he had a good reason for me. Then last year, that is 2022, a friend of mine came to my house, Carol and Janet. You are forever, I'm forever grateful when you came. They came and insisted I open. In fact, they came and called me and told me, teacher, in fact, they asked you to call me teacher. You know the way you took care of us when you were girls, because we were in school with them when I was a girl, and then I was a woman. You told us the importance of living, and you gave us a hope. And the word that that girl told me is Isaiah 63, arise and shine, for your light has come. And they went, Kara went ahead, got a job for me, negotiated the salary for me, and talked to my boss how good teacher I was. I went there, I, didn't even, I was not even interviewed. Then I thank God for teacher Anne of Black Best. She's been a twin sister that I never had. That woman took care of me. He told me, Hannah, because I told him I have children, but I don't have even money to go to school. He made sure the school bus would pick me near home in the evening and drop me. That teacher has been very instrumental in my life. Every time I talk to him, when I went there to Black Best, I never wanted people to, be my, to know that I'm a pastor because I was feeling wounded and I was even bitter with God. I was asking God, God, where are you? Is this your servant who is beating me up? And on Sunday, he's there ministering. He's there doing his own thing. He's left the house and he wished me dead. And he's there on Sunday preaching and praying to people and giving hope to hope to people. Because me, what I believe, the Bible says, if you cannot take care of your family, you're worse than a heathen. Then when I got the divorce, when I got the job, I continued. There is where I healed. I got children in my class, PP1 class, 2020. They were the best class. Those children used to pray for me. They used to encourage me. They used to tell me kind words. We used to pray every morning with them. We used to pray every evening with them. And that is how my healing came. Then graduation day came, 24th this November, 2022. That is when I knew people knew me. One person came to me and he told me, how are you, Mrs. Bishop? I was like, who is this who knows I'm a Mrs. Bishop? I told me I'm not Mrs. Bishop. I'm Teacher Hannah. He told me, stop praying with my mind. You are Mrs. Bishop and I know you. I've even been to your house. Mr. Kamau, I'm forever grateful. And this is the teacher, who, the, ma, the parent who told Teacher Hannah, I wish you know Teacher Ann, who you have. Teacher Hannah is not here because she wants money. She is here because of the seal she has for the children. That is where now Chege, my son, also found me up. And he came and told me, you are a pastor? I said, I'm not a pastor. I told, he told me, the words you have so, spoken is for a pastor. And since November 24th, that's when I shook my dust. And I said, I was going to black best to hide. And God has me, found me out. And this is now where I became back. And I said, I'm going to be the best that the Lord has made me. And I want to train up parents and people. Never put your trust in a man. Man may change. Man may, 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 may want you dead, but we thank God because God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I consecrated you. And I'm here telling people, better a broken marriage than a, a dead spouse. Because once your marriage is broken, you can live and do greater things. Better be wounded. And once you're wounded, you become a better healer because you know the pain. And as the Englishman said, experience is the best teacher. And I'm here to tell people, what's the most the, has the wives of pastors, the wives of bishops, the church is not your bride. The church is the bride of Christ. And if you cannot take care of your own bride, you cannot take care of somebody's bride. And I remember one thing that Timmy Singh said when he was in our church ordaining us, that you cannot only be a madman if you take care of somebody else's bride when you're not taking care of your bride. So ministers, being one of them myself, if you cannot take care of your own children, 
you cannot take care of the children of God. If you cannot take care of your husband, if you are a woman, you cannot take care of the church. And that's where the mistake is coming. That So many people are concentrating with the church and forgetting the fundamental, Jerusalem. Because we start from Jerusalem, we go to Judea, at the uttermost part of the world. And I want to speak this as a servant of God. Family is the most important thing in the church. Without a family, we have no church. And I'm here to say, parents, me being one of them, we must take care of our children. Because the wounds and the pain we put in them, that are in life, they will come to be. And I thank God, through it all, he has made me to persevere to see my children grow. Although they have experienced the pain of a divorce, and I'm telling you this, I have talked now with my children, and it's so painful for children who suffer divorce. But at the end of the day, you become better. Because you also have purpose that you never want your marriage to break. Because right now, I don't want my children to pass the pain I've passed through. I don't want my children and my friends and those who, people who hear this and be an audience of this thing to pass through the same. Because I've suffered that many may come back and get back their senses. Thank you very much. Probably you could address the issue of uh, stigma for divorcees in the church, especially women, and uh, what you wish the church or people would do to women who have been divorced. The stigma in the church, and that was my stigma that I was being stimulated, is, is Proverb 31 about uh, the, 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 the visual woman. And Proverbs 12 that a wise woman built her own house with her own hands, and a foolish one tear it with her own hands. But you cannot build alone. Even a normal, you need somebody to help you to build. And the other thing is, somebody tell you to build, then he take the hammer away from your hands. He give you, tell you to build, then he take the tools. That is the stigma that we have. And nobody, no woman, that one I'm a witness, no woman ever got married wishing to go try the marriage, then come back and divorce. But you can, ukiwachwa, wachika. There's nothing you can do it. You cannot force yourself to be loved. You cannot work to work with somebody who, who doesn't love you. And love is the fundamental of marriage. Where there's no love. And lo there's no love without sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And every woman, every man that will not sacrifice for his family, that will not love his family, is worse than a heathen. And he doesn't know Christ. Because you can't love the others when you have not loved your family. And love. Even animals, even anything, will understand the language of love. And once the love is over, you cannot force it. You can't go to the field in a petrol station. When it's gone, till you cultivate it yourself, you cannot force love. That is one thing. And ma, divorce is two ways. You cannot divorce somebody who loves you. You cannot divorce somebody who do good things to you. And you, if the Bible says to have become one, you can't beat yourself. Do, don't expect you woman, man to be beating your husband or you woman to be beating your wife and there she is, there, humbling. The first step before the woman humble is love. And once you love, everybody will understand the language of love. What are some of the emotions that, go th that, that someone goes through during that phase? What do they feel? And you mentioned about being angry with God. Uh, how is that season like? It's very bitter. You become bitter with everybody. And the other thing is, you have now to go, that's another thing, I have also, after divorce, nurse also have gone under the same counseling. I went through a friend who did, who carried me through the counseling and he told me, it's like, a, when, you, 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 when I was growing up, you used to cook with a pot. And once the pot is broken, you can buy another one, but you cannot repair a broken pot. That is now the work you, as the person who has suffered a divorce, as a child who has suffered a divorce, as a man who has suffered a divorce, as a woman who has suffered a divorce, you have to re-energize yourself and to rediscover yourself. And that is the only time you do what is best for you. And you keep affirming yourself. Hannah, every morning I wake up, I say, Hannah, you are the best. Me, even now, I'm not given up with love, but I'm not in a in a to, 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 to rush. Because the other mistake people do, they divorce and they rush, and they go with a wooded heart. And you cannot give what you don't have. If your heart is breeding, even when you go to another relationship, it will not last. So what I would tell people who have suffered divorce, please take time first, heal yourself. I have an inspector. Alikuwa Naniambia, Hannah, you are my pastor. I cannot even cancel you, but you have to cancel yourself.
strength comes from within. And you encourage yourself. And you have firm yourself. And also you walk with the right people. That's another thing. Because if you walk, walk with the wrong people that will discourage you, that will put you down, you never heal. And the other thing, if you stay in the same thing, toxic relationship, thinking you are going to heal it, you can only heal yourself, but you cannot change somebody else. You can only change yourself. And you can only change whoever wants to be changed. So if somebody doesn't want to change, you can never do anything about them. So the only person you can change is yourself. And you agree it has happened, and you agree it has happened. And even the way to heal after a loss is first you accept this is a reality and you plan the way forward. So anyway, you have um, highlighted uh, quite a number of things. So as, um, as we wrap uh, this up, you have said something about affirming yourself. And I think that is something many people are not good at or they don't know how to do it. Uh, kindly help someone on how to find, how to affirm themselves and how to surround themselves with uh, people who affirm them. How can, how can you know how to affirm yourself? Assuming, okay, uh, maybe someone is not brought up in the church, they do not know so many Bible verses and all that. How should one start their journey to recovery after a divorce? As I said from the very beginning, how to affirm yourself. You can never know something, you have to learn. And this is what I said, it's very important to go for counseling. Because a counselor is like a liver. A liver brings water for people to take. But it's only those people who go to the liver to fetch the water that will be helped. There are so many counselors. You might say it's very expensive for counseling, but your life is more important. And your future is very important. And if you are able to pay for a doctor or for medication, in fact, the best, the worst disease is your head and your heart. If your head is wounded and your heart is wounded, you are not there anymore. Even if your body, other systems are functioning well, and your head and your heart is wounded, you need a counselor. You need somebody to work with you. If you don't get somebody to work with you, who is a professional, will not, will not work with it. So you must be able to walk, to go look for the, for the help. The help will not get you. You might not even know the people you are working with because you don't know them and you don't know them, but you should look for counsel and tell somebody, please look in the internet. Nowadays you're working in the information department to technology. You take the technology, even through internet, look for counseling, look for material, look for books, look for people. And once you see somebody is toxic, please get away from them. Because where's you come na unakana watu wa gonjwa. We can isolate ourselves like the time of Corona. We have learned how to isolate ourselves. You make sure you take care of yourself. People might say you are proud. People will say you don't care. But what a, it's all about me. My life is my life. Because the time I will die, everything will continue. If I died, that time, the only people who would have not replaced me is my, my children and my parents and my good friends. They would live with my memory forever. But they don't need to live from my memory through depression. They need to live with me as much as God wants me. Because we have so many talents in the grave and people just were ignorant or all want. They never took the right decision. It's like when you see a car has a mechanical problem. If, if you drive it in faith, it will break down. It might even kill you. So when you realize your body has a problem, seek for, for the help where you can get it. As we get to wrapping it up, talk to someone who is going through depression. It could be for different reasons, but whatever the reasons from your own story and experience, uh, how should now people help someone who is going through a depression? Now you're talking about now the, the third parties. It could be family members or friends. How, okay, what are some of the indicators that someone is going through depression? And how can someone reach out to someone who is going through depression? Good. One thing that you know somebody is suffering depression is they do something they were never used to do. Me, like me, I would sleep for 48 hours. Be in bed for 48 hours. Sometimes they eat so much or they don't eat. Sometimes they talk too much or they don't talk. Sometimes they, they change of character. If it's your brother, your neighbor, your friend, this is something you'd see abnormal. When people start acting abnormal, and there's something they have been passing through, be there, sometimes even being there, not even talking to them, be there in their presence. And even calling them, I say, tell them, I love you, I'm praying for you, I care for you. Do you, do you have, is there anything you need? And also even yourself, you seek counsel for them. 
and you go and even see a cousin and tell, I have a friend, I have a brother, I have a sister who is the one, two, three, four. What can I do for them? The other thing I want to say that people should always take care of children and hustle as teacher. The Bible says that teacher will be hustle judged because there are those things happen in childhood and the parents are ignorant. The teacher, the, the, the teacher is also ignorant. And when they come home, when they come to school, if you teacher, instead of embracing those children and talking to them and opening up to them, you, have, you start telling us, them, you can start calling them names. You start telling us them bad things. So as teachers, because you have a lot of time with these children, sometimes even more than the parents. Like nowadays with working parents, it's very hard for teachers, for parents to realize their children are passing through things. Please, as teachers, every teacher should be very careful how they handle children. Because I would imagine if my husband got the right upbringing from even a teacher who worked with them, he would be very different. So as teachers, we must work with these children. And once you realize in their formative time, because we have the know-how, both curriculum and even counseling, and every teacher at least should learn the basic counseling skill. Because that will help you even to be a better teacher and even to be a better role model, to be a better parent, because you are also a parent in a way to that child. Always make sure you take care of these children. Because some of them, they have come to our hands when they are already wounded. Instead of repairing and healing them, we have wounded them the more. So we must look at those things. Even in your class, when you see a child has been very good, then all of a sudden, he has changed. He has been very quiet, then he has started very hyper. You should always go and dig digger, dig deeper, and that will help you and they will help our generation. Very good. Thank you. Uh, three last questions as you wrap up. You don't have to explain uh, a lot. Tell us, yeah, what do people misunderstand you most for? <laughs> <laughs> that one. There's, most of the time they misunderstand me for because me, I'm focal. When I'm not happy, I'll say I'm not happy. When I'm happy, I'm, I'll say I'm happy. And that is one thing people have me that The other thing people understand me for, me, I'm pro, I'm so masculine. Me, even now, I have more boyfriends, and I call them boyfriends more than girlfriends. And people would understand me for that, because I throw very fast. In fact, I would throw even with a man we have never met for a long time, and throw very well. That is one thing that people misunderstand me for. Good, thank you uh, for that response. Uh, second question. Uh, if you could be remembered for one thing, for one thing what could it be? If I would if want be to be remembered rem for one thing, yes. If I would want to be remembered for one thing is, in my slogan is, I want to live somewhere, something or somewhere better than I found it. Uh, the last question. Tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they impacted you. The most influential people in my life, one has been my daddy and my mommy. They have really influenced me that even when I suffer divorce. You know, the parent will see when a, a daughter is divorced, like she is a rabbinity. In our African culture, the dawale will not come. Then they are rabbinity in their life. The other thing, uh, the most other important people are my siblings, my brothers and sisters. They kept in touch with me always. The other person who was very important in my life, <coughs> Bishop Karioki and Leverett Miriam. They are my bishops. They took care of me. <coughs> <coughs> and they affirmed me and they told me it's not my fault that my marriage has broken and they have been praying for me, they have been following me up and they have really played a very important role. The other person that have been very influential in my life is Bishop David Chege of Full Gospel Churches of Kenya, Kawang Nairobi area. That man, he was the first one to know I had been divorced. And he called me and he told me, Hannah, you have to know the truth is you are divorcee and your husband doesn't know you, he's already ready to get married, and this is the truth, and you have to live with it. And he has been working with me since that day. Those are the most important things. I have so many others. In fact, I have so many others. Like those with Carol who got me a job in Black Best and came and talked to me. Janet is also a good friend. Hannah, my neighbor, has been talking to me every day. And one day he told me, Hannah, you have gone to the end of the tunnel. You have to start, to come back, start coming back like There are so many people I can't mention, but there are those that I every day have to pray and remember because they have made me better, than, the, the, the better Hannah I am in this version. Good. Last, 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 last one. Speak to children, because you have uh, young adults as children. Speak to, to children who, are, who, are, who get caught up 
in the divorce saga, let me call it saga. Just speak a word of encouragement to them. Just speak a word of encouragement to them. What do you tell these children? This is a lesson. One thing you should take as a lesson that you've learned. And the other thing you should also know. This is my mother, this is my father. You should never side with either of your parents because they are both equally your parent. And their langos is not your business. You should not involve yourself in the, the lango of your parent. See, standing with one person because he has told me, hey, baba yako alinifanya, mama yako alinifanya. No, both of them are your parent. Their problem is not their problem, not your problem. And the other thing you saw, it's not your fault that your parent have divorced. You have your life. And you can only become better than your parent. Then you have to purpose. Me, I have to be very careful. And I also have to inquire from my parents why they divorced, so that I can learn from it. And when I'm getting into a family, I take care of those red, red, red flags. Wow, that was good. I know this will be a blessing to many. I want you to click the button subscribe. And in case you do want help from me, my name is Hannah Wanjiko Maura officially. Miss Kigodo, my number is 0718-370-355. My phone is on anytime you call. If I don't pick up your phone, I, I find a missed call, you can write me a message, I can always help. And as I said, I'm a wounded healer. I'm a wounded healer. I'm there to heal because things that happen in my life, they can only get me better. Because Jeremiah told me, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I consecrated. And before that consecration, there are those things that we pass through. Before the gold is made and displayed in the mark in the in the in the in the, in the, in the shop, it's passed through fire. And the nice gold has to pass through fire. And this fire can only get me the better fashion of Hannah in Jesus' name.